Hey students, uh, welcome back to school. I can tell you it's been five long months and our faculty and staff, me personally, we are so excited about having you back on campus. Welcome back to Conway Christian. It's the year 2020-21 and even with all this crazy stuff going on, we are ready to make the most out of the school year. But we're gonna need your help. And so I'm coming to you right now and I'm just asking you, um, we've put specific procedures and policies in place that we need you to adhere to while we're at school, we're gonna do it too. So faculty, staff, and students are all in this together to make sure we get off to a safe start. But also, here's what I'm begging each and every one of you. Once you leave school, make sure you follow the same procedures and the same policies when you're at home or hanging out with your friends. Look, I love hanging out with people, and I'm not gonna stop hanging out with people, but what I've had to do is I've had to wear this mask. And I'll put this mask on when, when I'm anywhere close to six feet from people, and then I'll make sure that I'm socially distanced. And that way I can still have conversations. I can still hang out with my friends. But if we do this, we've got the best opportunity for success as we begin the school year and as we continue on throughout the school year. It's gonna let us do all of our activities, our recess, our lunch, our sports, our arts, all the things we wanna do. Now, if we don't do those things and we have issues, then those will be some of the first things that have to be taken away. And we don't wanna do that. So together, we can get this done our theme this year is about soaring. The way that we're going to soar is by following the rules and doing the best things we can. So I'm going to see you around on campus. I'm going to want to high five you. I'm going to want to give you a pat on the back. I'm not going to be able to. I'm probably going to stay six to 10 feet away from you, but just know my love's with you. All our faculty and staff love you. We're here for you and we are ready to rock and roll. So have a great first day of school and uh, we'll see you around campus. Hey, good morning, Conway Christian. Welcome back to school. I have missed you guys tremendously. I mean, so much I missed you guys this summer. I know that y'all have missed being with each other and all the school activities. I don't know how you feel about the uh, homework and the tests and stuff that are coming back, but I, I do know that you've missed being with your friends, and I've missed that for y'all. I hate that you lost uh, a part of that high school time together. I want to say a special welcome this morning to our seventh graders moving over to the uh, upper school campus. We are so glad to have you with us on the upper school side. Welcome to all of our new faculty and staff as well. Several of y'all that are new this year, we are so glad to have you. It's going to be a great year. Uh, I am very excited to be with you this morning. And as Mr. Carson welcomed you and, and kind of set the tone, we want to do the same thing for just a few minutes uh, with uh, a spiritual emphasis to kind of get our day and our school year started. Uh, our theme this year is SOAR, uh, S-O-A-R, and it comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 40. And if those verses sound really familiar to you, it's because it's been our school verse. And it's been our school verse for a long time, but we want to spend a few minutes kind of looking at it uh, a little deeper this morning. And so I'm going to have it up here on the screen, but if you have a Bible uh, there close to you, you can turn to Isaiah chapter 40 if you want to, to read those along with me. Before we do anything else today, uh, let's pray again together this morning. So let's bow and pray. Father, I thank you so much for each one of our students. I thank you for each teacher, each faculty member. God, the joy that we have to be back together. Uh, Father, we do need uh, your hand of protection and guidance. We need your safety. We ask for you to bless uh, our endeavors this school year. Uh, God, our goal is to glorify and honor you through our academics, through our arts, through our athletics, through everything that we do. And so, Father, with that goal in mind, we pray that you would bless our efforts. Keep us safe. Allow us to be healthy. Allow us to continue to come to school every day. Be with our uh, teachers. Be with our families uh, and help them just to be safe and to have your hand of guidance and protection on them. Father, I thank you for each one of our students. I love them. I'm, I'm so glad to get to see them again as we start school together. I pray for each and every one of them, Father. I pray uh, from our brand new seventh graders to our seniors who are beginning uh, their last year, the class of 2021, as they start, uh, have their first, or their, excuse me, their last first day today, Father. I pray that you bless them as well. God, be with all of us as we go forward. We love you. We trust you. We pray in Jesus' name, and all of the upper school would say, amen. Let's look together at this verse, Isaiah chapter 40. Now, the neat thing about the book of Isaiah is it has 66 chapters just like the Bible has 66 books in it, and it's divided actually pretty uh, similarly to, the, to uh, Scripture. The first 39 chapters are kind of like the Old Testament, and in those chapters, Isaiah tells uh, kind of a history of God's people. Here's what we've gone through. Here's what has happened to us in the past. And then from chapter 40 forward, he tells about the things that are going to happen. 
And kind of spoiler alert, there's going to be some hard times coming up for God's people. They have been disobedient sometimes. And so some of the judgments are going to happen. There's going to be captivity. There's going to be other things that go on with them. But in spite of that, God is going to be with them. And here's what he says in the very first verse of this chapter. Comfort, oh, comfort my people, says your God. And so I want to do that same thing this morning as I share scripture with you guys. I want you to be comforted. I want you to know that the world is uncertain, be it health-wise, be it social-wise, be it lots of different things that are going on. We're going to do our best this year to try to give you guys some context to help you understand maybe why some of the things are going on or what God might be doing in some of our circumstances. And we want to give you the comfort of knowing who God is in those circumstances. And so with that in mind, I want to share these, these verses with you. We're going to focus primarily on, whoops, excuse me, on uh, verses 28 through 31 this morning. And here's what he says there, and I'm just going to go a verse at a time because I have an acronym for you you can see this morning. Verse 28, he says, have you not known, have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint. He does not grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. S-O-A-R. If we're going to soar this year, here are four things I want you to think about. The S in SOAR stands for, for us for salvation. In verse 28, he asked the people, have you known this? Have you heard this? Do you know who God is? And the only way for any of us to know who God is is to be in a relationship with him through salvation. And salvation only comes through Jesus Christ. And you might say, well, you know, Dr. Crow, this is Christian school. We all know that. And, and maybe we do. We know the right answers. We know the academic answers. We could pass the salvation test on paper. But it's so important for you guys to remember who you are. Who you are comes from your relationship with Jesus and nothing else. You are not a product of your grades or your talent or your athletic ability or anything else. Who you are comes from your relationship with Jesus. And that is the only way any of us find identity or meaning or anything else. That's who we are first. Everything that I am, a teacher, a pastor, a husband, a father, all those things are so wonderful. And I love all those roles. But none of those roles can be correct unless I am first a child of Jesus. Salvation. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is an everlasting God. He's the creator. He's my creator. He's your creator. He doesn't get faint, he doesn't get tired. And so since I know he's my God, I can draw from that same strength. I can know that, hey, whatever happens with health, whatever happens with society, I am who I am in Jesus. And there's no difference there. It doesn't matter if you're male or female, what, what nationality you are, what ethnicity you are, what your background is. First and foremost, we are all children of God if we have been saved. That's the first and foremost, most important thing. If any of you are sitting here this morning on the first day of school and you don't know for a fact that you are a child of God, that you have been saved, that you have been redeemed, then I would love to talk to you. Your teacher would love to talk to you. Your coach, anybody on this campus would love to talk to you about that because our year begins there. We must be saved. We must know who Jesus is. So that's the S in SOAR. The O in SOAR could stand for a couple different things, opportunity or obstacles. Look at verse 29 here. He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Now, depending on how you look at this verse, you might see opportunity there, or you might see obstacles there. Because here's the thing. He has to give power. He has to give might. Why? Because we don't have those things. We're going to get tired. We're going to be overwhelmed. We're going to have difficulty. But what Isaiah tells us here is that when we do have difficulty, when we do have obstacles, we have an opportunity there. And our opportunity as believers is to go to God for power, to go to God for might and for strength. We have an advantage. Guys, you're so blessed to every single day come to a school where I promise you, your teacher has prayed for you, your principal has prayed for you, your counselor has prayed for you. Those people are here every day because they love you and they want to see you grow, not just socially, not just academically. They want to see you grow in your relationship with Jesus. And so they push you toward going back to the source, going back to God for might, for strength, for those things that you need. 
And so I don't want you to focus on the obstacles. They're going to be there. They're going to happen. We know we're going to run into stuff this year that's going to be difficult, and we're going to have to figure out how to work through it together. Instead, I want you to focus on the opportunity that we have together to grow together as God leads all of us. What a wonderful joy that is to know we have those opportunities every single day. And so if you need that, go to God. Go ask him for strength. Go ask him for might. And if you don't know how to do that, you don't know how to talk to him about that. Again, lots of people on this campus that would come talk to you. So SO, salvation opportunity. And in verse 30, I want you to think about advancement this morning. Even youths, he says, shall faint and be weary. Even young men shall fall exhausted. Advancement. What does God want from us? And, and, and we can answer that a lot of ways. The Bible has a lot of different things that God wants from his people, that he desires from his people. But the main thing that he's always telling us is he wants us to be faithful. And what that means is he wants us to be moving forward. So today is August 5th. It is Wednesday, August 5th, 2020. No matter what happens today, we will never get another chance at this day. We get one shot at this day. We get one shot at this school year. You get one shot at third period. You get one shot, you know, to play volleyball against this team or to play football against that team or one test or whatever it is. And all God wants us to do is be moving forward and be faithful, advance day by day by day. So verse 30 tells us that as we do that, we're going to get tired. Youths are going to be faint and weary. Young men are going to be exhausted. Why? Because they're working, they're striving, they're moving forward but they are moving forward. You don't get tired unless you're putting out effort, unless you're trying to advance. So my challenge to all of us, starting with Dr. Crow, is that when August 6th gets here, that I'm a little better than I was on August 5th, that I'm a little stronger academically, that I'm a little stronger in my faith walk with Jesus, that I've tried to better myself as a human being and as a person and as a child of God. I just want to get a little better every single day. That's why we have class. That's why in athletics we have practice. That's why we have rehearsals in the arts, because we want to get better. That's why you're going to write a rough draft of your paper first. Why? So we can advance, so we can get better. So this year, no telling what the rest of the school year will look like, but let's, let's promise that together we're going to advance a little bit every single day. Which leads me to my last point, verse 31, relationship. They who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Verse 31 describes two relationships. And the first one is pretty obvious. It's a relationship with God. If you wait for the Lord, you wait for the Lord. We, we all need to do that. We need to go to the Lord every single day, not just in Bible class, not just on chapel days, but you need to spend time with your God every single day. I have missed being with you guys so much because even, you know, online we interacted and we emailed and stuff like that, but it's not the same. We need to spend time together to really, you know, understand each other. The same is true with your relationship with God. If you want to advance, as we just talked about in verse 30, you want to go forward with God. The only way to do that is to spend time with him daily, to have a daily walk, a daily relationship with God. So that's the first one. That's pretty easy. I think you see that there. But notice something else. In verse 31, it says they. And it, it says it more than once. One, two, three, four times. And in the original language, it's plural. And what that implies to us is that groups of people, followers of God, do this together. They, those people, them. That's us. God has put us together as a school. He put all of your classes together. He put your grades together. He put who you're sitting next to right now together. He put your homerooms together, your AO, all those things. Those are put together by God, and there's no accidents. And so for whatever reason, God has said, hey, during this part of your spiritual walk, during this part of your journey, I want you to do it with these people that are around you. They, them. So number one, you need a relationship with God. But number two, we need relationships with each other. I will tell you guys boldly this morning, I need y'all. As a teacher, I need y'all. I have missed you. I need to be back together. We need our classes together. We need our teams together. Faculty and staff, I have missed you terribly. I need you as we serve and as we work together. And if we'll do that, if we'll focus on that, I believe, Common Christian, that we can soar together this year. That our salvation, 
our opportunities, our advancement, and our relationships. I believe they can soar and fly high through everything that we do this year. I love you guys. I'm so glad we're back. I want to pray again this morning. Father, thank you for each student that listened to my voice this morning, listened to these thoughts that I had. Thank you for your word that gives us these thoughts and these ideas. Father, I, I pray that we would take them and not just hear them and then move on to the next thing. That we would understand what your word is calling us to, relationship with you and relationship with each other. So, Father, help us in these relationships to glorify and honor you above anything else. God, give us a wonderful school year. Help the Conway Christian Eagles this year, Father, to soar for your honor and glory. We love you. We trust you. We pray in Jesus' name. And all God's people would say, amen. Conway Christian, have a good and godly day.